Hello everyone, my name is Sarah Devlin and welcome to my very first doll customization video. Today we are going to be creating a doll based on the character Rase from the video game Deltarune. If you have never played it, there will be some small spoilers in this video. The base for this doll is Caddy Noir from Monster High. First, I cut off her existing hair. It is pretty long, so I wanted to keep it to use in another project, but it was just too sticky and gluey to keep. I removed the doll's head after softening it in hot water and used pliers to remove the stubble and glue from inside the doll's head. I removed the factory paint next using a few q-tips soaked in acetone the glitter eyebrows were a bit challenging to remove, but I found that working in layers, switching out my q-tips for fresh ones every layer or so helped. I am using DOS air drying clay for the horns and body modifications. I shaped the horns around the ears, which helped them anchor to the doll nicely. Doll's brand new look just did a review of this clay, and I must agree with her, it does feel a bit like wet paper. It was actually my first thought when I used it for the first time. It really isn't the best clay, but I did make it work. And if you're looking for a cheap air drying clay, I'd say it's okay to start with if you're not sure what else to use. Rase is revealed to be a bit of a goat monster creature thingy at the end of the game, so I didn't feel completely bound by normal goat anatomy. His legs still work like human legs for that reason. And I also don't really feel like I have the skills, let alone the supplies yet, to do more drastic body modifications. His hooves were a bit harder to come up with, and it took me over three tries to get ones I liked. I ended up using less clay than I expected, and the changes were more subtle but I think it turned out well. I ended up using existing heel and foot shapes on the doll rather than trying to reshape it entirely. Why reinvent the wheel? I also added to the torso of the doll, making the boobs less booby. This was to help his cloak fall the way I wanted it to. Once the clay was dry, I sanded it all with a nail file to smooth it out. Then I painted the hooves and horns with a watered down acrylic in a very dark gray to distinguish the nail texture and material from his body fur. The torso I repainted in a straight black to match the body again in a watered down acrylic. Then I varnished the body and prepped the face with a matte varnish. The hooves and horns again were different. They received a glossy coat to stand out. The next step was his hair and his fur. I used a partial skein of 100% acrylic yarn I bought in a lot off the app Depop, which is kind of similar to eBay, but there are no auctions. After brushing out the yarn and doing my best to flatten it using an iron, I don't have a straightener, I made wefts for his legs and head. I reused a mailing envelope as the base that I made the wefts on. For a great tutorial on making yarn wefts, check out Mizekito's channel. I'm still learning. I wrapped Wes around his ankle to give the illusion that he has fur all over his legs. I added two layers that worked their way upwards. I trimmed them to have a more layered look and ended with some flock to cover up the glue at the top. I found the easiest way to keep the wefts in place while the glue dries was twist ties. Thank you. 
I ended up making two sets of ears. The first ones were made out of cardboard. I painted them black and glued the flock onto it. I got them all the way glued onto his head before I decided that I hated them. Before I realized that I hated them though, I started working on the face up. Since the doll is already black, shadows and highlights just make him look dusty. So I decided to keep the style simple, like the game. If you look at the pixel art from the game, Ralsei's eyes are actually black with white dots. I guess those are the pupils or the irises, maybe? I decided to take some creative liberties and give him white scleras, as is normal, with black pupils so that everything would have a little contrast. I made the pupils rectangular as a nod to his goat form. Since the eyes were only two colors in the art, he still doesn't have any real irises. I used watered down acrylics for nearly all of his face up. I attempted to blush his lips and cheeks with pastel, but he looked like a kid who had been snorting pixie sticks or maybe had dove headfirst into a cotton candy machine. So in the end, I left his lips black and added the blushes that he can have sometimes in game just to give a little more life. I created the pink ovals by mixing white paint and pink pastels and just painting it on. It was now that I decided that the ears looked just too grungy, so I cut them off. I chipped his horn, but that was an easy fix. The second iteration of the ears I sewed out of some old t-shirt material and stuffed with leftover yarn fluff. Then I glued them back on where the first set of ears had been. The difference in texture was more obvious and they looked much neater. I'm still figuring out how to deal with hair, especially gluing it on. His isn't anything to write home about. Good thing that Ralse wears a hat. I was also sick through most of this custom, so I think I actually forgot to record most of the hair on his head. It's not worth watching anyways. So it was now time to reattach his head to his body. Look at that head of hair! I combed and styled his hair so that it would peek out from under his hat. I layered it a bit too so there wasn't too much bulk under there. The first part of his clothes that I made were his hat. I followed the witch hat tutorial by Lomi's Playground. She made one for her BJD out of felt. 
but it was easy enough to make one at monster high size using t-shirt material. I used the same part of an old t-shirt for his hat and his cloak. The front was used in a t-shirt quilt and I had saved the back half not knowing when it would come in handy. Turns out it was the only green fabric I own that doesn't have a print on it. Lucky for me that I saved it. The tutorial is a bit in depth and involves a bit of math, but don't let that scare you off. Lomi walks you through everything step by step and even supplies a calculator that does all of the complicated math for you if you want to use it. I did. I made my pattern on some packaging material that had came with something that I had ordered. And I used the measurements I had taken following Lomi's instructions. The next part was something that I added on my own. I sewed the fabric around the tips of his horns so they were more visible under the hat. It kind of made pockets that you could slip his horns into. They aren't as visible in the game, but again, artistic liberties. The brim of the hat was curling badly since it was sewn out of a knit fabric. I tried to remedy that by adding some watered down fabric glue to it and letting it dry flat. Unfortunately, that didn't work either and it still curled along the grain of the fabric. As knit fabric tends to do, it just looked awkward. So I decided to create a cardboard reinforcer. It's not quite as wide as the brim and has a just slightly larger head hole than the hat itself. I glued that to the hat and then added another layer of green fabric to the underside to hide the cardboard. The glue was still causing the cardboard to curl a little, so when I added the second layer of fabric, I made sure the stitches or grain of the fabric were pointing in a perpendicular direction or something close to that. Then I pressed it to dry flat. The cloak was a half circle with two armholes and a small one half circle cut out for the collar. The sleeves were simple rectangles. I fray checked all of the edges that would be left unsewn. T-shirt material doesn't fray, but it does stretch and can look ragged on its own. The first thing I did was sew the sides of the sleeves together, right sides facing. I started at the cuff end and worked towards the shoulder area. Once I reached the shoulder area, I pinned the sleeve tube to the shoulder hole with the right sides facing. This means that I had to turn the sleeve right side out. I didn't fray check the sleeve hole in the cape since it was going to be sewn to another piece of fabric, but I wish I had. The hole stretched when I was trying the garment on raw say, which made that sewing on the sleeves harder when I went to do that. The last detail on the cape was his heart. I cut out a black heart from, you guessed it, more old t-shirt material. I covered the whole thing in fray check to stiffen it and glued it to the outer flap of the cape at belly height. Be sure to think through the process or you'll end up putting glue on the wrong side, like I did. The cardboard is to keep it from gluing itself to the back of the cape. Once it was dry, I added snaps along the front edges, hiding the lowermost snap under his heart. I made his glasses out of jump rings and the wire from inside twist ties. I bent the wire to the jump rings on each side to make arms and then attached them using another piece to make the nose bridge. I sealed them in an open pose with super glue. It's not the best explanation for how I did it, but honestly, I made it up as I went and I'm really only showing you my second try because I didn't know what I was doing at first. I was just playing around. Then it was time for the scarf. As an avid knitter, I knew I wanted to knit it for him. Unfortunately, I didn't have any pink yarn in the right shade, so I decided that I'd dye up some white yarn into the pink to suit my needs. I soaked the yarn in water with citric acid first and then mixed up some food coloring in hot water per the color chart on the box of the food coloring. Then I let it soak until it was the color that I wanted. I was planning on doing that overnight, but it ended up only needing an hour or two. I rinsed it with cool water and let it dry overnight, then wound the yarn up into a ball.
Then I cast on seven stitches on size US1 needles and knit until it was long enough that it looked good against the doll. If you'd like a full tutorial on dyeing yarn and knitting doll scarves, let me know, I can do that. Then it was time to dress them up. I love how he turned out, and I think for my third doll customization, the result is awesome! If you enjoyed this, there will be another Delta Rune doll in the future soon. I also do lots of arty and bookish stuff too, so be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and have an amazing day!